Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we would work on blocking facial recognition software with makeup. There are a ton of people protesting right now and I heard recently that there's facial recognition technology being used to help identify people, which is really creepy, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's just seems, it's creepy. I started doing some research. I found out there is this really cool site called CV Dazzle that has been trying for a number of years now, I guess, get the information out there about how makeup can help mask your identity when it comes to those facial recognition softwares. There's also a club in the UK called the Dazzle Club that goes around and wears like this makeup style and um, people just basically go on walks around and it masks their identity. So thought that was pretty interesting, thought I'd share it with you. I will put the link in the description um, to their website. They have a couple different layouts, they have different designs that you can see, and they also have like practice technology that you can test your makeup out on to see if it will block that. So I did not try out this look beforehand, so I have no idea if it will actually end up like blocking it or not, but the basic idea is to do a number of things. I'm gonna start with my foundation really quick. So I got a really helpful comment about the fact that protesters aren't supposed to wear makeup because it can interact with tear gas. So I did some quick Googling. I am by no means a professional. I don't know what I'm talking about, so drop it in the comments if you do. Um, but it looks like the stuff that interacts with the tear gas specifically is stuff that is oil-based. So if you have a foundation that's oil-based, if you have mascara, which I'm guessing is oil-based so it doesn't dry up in the tube, lipstick, stuff like that, which is oil-based, will interact with tear gas. Stuff that is not oil-based will be more friendly and hopefully not cause the tear gas to stick to your skin. Also, if you mix a little bit of baking soda in, like if you're using eyeshadow pigments, mix a little baking soda into that. Um, and then if you get sprayed, you can spritz your face with some water and hopefully the baking soda will neutralize it. I don't know if that would work, but that's what I'm kind of seeing on Google as potential solutions. So let me know your thoughts, especially if you're a cosmetologist. Is that good? Yeah. And just so you know, I am only going to go to about my nose line. Let me tell you, this makeup gets so funky so fast. Funky in a good way, I guess, because we're, you know, keeping Big Brother from watching us. Mm. I am using my setting powder to just kind of keep in what I got so far with my foundation. If you're outside a lot and it's starting to get into summertime, you're gonna want all of the setting materials that include setting powder, that includes setting spray. I am just gonna wear this temporarily for the purposes of demonstration, so I'm not gonna use setting spray. That's just me. But if you're going outside with it and you want like long-term wear, I would suggest it. Okay. So normally what I would do after that is I would do contour, I would do blush, I would do highlight and stuff. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to take that lower half that I didn't put anything on. And if you're wearing a mask, like one of the protective ones for COVID-19, then you don't really have to do anything to the bottom half of your mouth because you're already partially obscured. Uh, but if you're not wearing a mask, which I suggest you do because pandemic, or if this is long after and everyone goes back to normal, hello future person, I'm glad to hear that everything went back to normal. Then what I'm gonna do is I am going to go and I'm going to basically paint the bottom half of my face a different color. Uh, this is because facial recognition technology relies on the fact that there are certain key defining features about your face and that will help it identify who you are. You take your skin tone and it, they, they frequently say if you have dark skin, use light makeup and if you have light skin, use dark makeup and use a bunch of different color and color in weird places to kind of mask where certain features are. So this is not fully going in different color. Again, you're not trying to look like somebody else, you're trying to not look like a face. Key features being the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, right? So I'm going to basically paint this half of my face blue. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna use Cancelled from the Shane Dawson Jeffree Star collab. Um, any eyeshadow can be turned into a paint. You just add some water. That's if you don't have like face paint, you don't wanna go out and buy some, eyeshadow works. So a little bit smeary. We're gonna, we'll go back in, we'll put some powder over top of it to solidify it. 
And they say, like, instead of doing a hard line, you kind of want to do more of like an ombre. So I'll try and darken up that bottom part after I get the space on. Also, if you can disguise the shape of your face. So usually when you contour and highlight, you're kind of lightly changing the shape of your face anyway. But like I probably should not have gone to my jawline. I probably should have stopped and made my face look a little bit shorter here because that will also mess up the tech. In fact, I'm gonna kind of go back in and take some of that out. So I didn't extend it all the way. Let's go back in and darken it. Beautiful. Let's see, I'm gonna use my contour brush. I just cleaned it. Hopefully I can get some less wet powder in there. So we don't want any of those key features to stand out, so you probably want your lips to stay whatever color you kind of have around there. Get it in a nice nude and then put something else that could be lips in a weird spot on your face. They have different shapes that you can kind of use as templates as well. So, okay. I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna fade it with a little bit. Let's get this ombre sort of effect going. Cool, very blue. Okay, so there's a shape that I'm using. It is like, it's over, so you mask like half of your face with your hair, so you block out like that, and then um, you want it like really long in the middle to kind of block out that nose bridge. And I'm gonna use pieces of hair that I am attaching to bobby pins to get it in there. You could probably attach it to like a headband as well. Um, and then it, another key feature is like going over one eyebrow and really blocking it out and then going right underneath that eye and kind of doing a weird shape that doesn't fit your face. Most of this is to make your face not look like your face but also not look like anybody else's face, right? Got all these body pencils. And again, one of the things is doing spots of color that don't match. Um, I saw this really cool image on the CV Dazzle site of this guy. It almost looked pixelated. So I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna do some squares. I'm gonna do one that's a black square. I'm gonna go in with another color. I have a brown. I also have a white. So I'm gonna kind of try and figure out where I wanna put this, oh gosh. I'm gonna clean this up with a brush to make this more square and a little less weird looking. Or maybe the same amount weird looking. Maybe I'll put one over here too. If you're like, this looks really weird. It does. It's very weird, but also pretty much everything on the runway that comes out of Fashion Week looks a little weird. So you're, you're not bizarre, you're just avant-garde. You know, I don't think this is too far from our, our current fashion trends. You guys seen like the berry lip trend? It's almost like the bitten lip trend where you just kind of put color in the middle and then it fades out. That's neutralizing out your lip shape a little too. Okay, so I've got my color block here. Let's go in and kind of touch it up. Now these pencils are more of an oil pencil, so I'm not gonna use water to touch them up. Be aware of what makeup you're using. Creme makeup is not the same. You probably wanna powder over these too. You can use an eyeshadow color to, you know, cause it's not like setting pattern. It just works. It's a little bit trickier. Now, flat earth happens to be pretty much the color of the white after it hit the blue. So I might as well, you know, ooh, yep. Lip feels dry, must be working. Use some diet root beer for the brown. And I don't have a good black, so I could go glittery. You know what? I'll go glittery. I'm gonna use Executioner from the Bloodlust palette. It's one weird little glittery square. It's not highlighting anything except for the black square, so I feel like it's fine. And actually, another thing that I saw that I really liked in some of those painting, or not paintings, but some of the makeup designs was they did like a stripe down the lip there. So it's gonna be a little asymmetric, because it's supposed to be. Oh, this, by the way, these are the Wet n Wild Multi Sticks that I'm using, um, and the white one was a NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil. So the black and the brown one were that, yeah. Okay, 
fill back in. I'm gonna do the executioner on that black just to kind of get it to stay there. And this is a fun makeup for me. This is this is just me putting it on to show you. I am not a professional with this, as always. You guys know that by now. And if you don't know that, you should subscribe to my channel so you can know that. All right, cool. I look weird. Isn't this great? This is a lot of fun. Just think about it. You guys can have protest parties and get all glammed up for it. Maybe not party isn't the... Also, if you're, if you're going into a protest and you have somebody in opposition of you and they look like this, wouldn't you be a little freaked out? Isn't that kind of fun? Like, it's like war paint in a way. Next thing, I'm going to probably make mistakes with my eyebrows, I think. Part of that weird thing, I think I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna regret this so much. I'm gonna go in with NYX Strictly Vinyl Lip Gloss. It's in black. So, uh, and I'm gonna really just make my eyebrow look weird. I think the goal is to confuse the sensors by thinking that this is another eye up here because you're gonna obscure your other eye. I'm so glamorous, Picasso would love me. <sighs> so let's see how I'm doing. Okay, so I think I have most of my base makeup on for this. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. This is a very bizarre experience. And you know, just for fun, I think I'm gonna do a little color on my lid. Or maybe not my lid, maybe I'll do it under my eye. Again, confuse, confusing shapes. Sorry, this is really fun. I'm just saying, this is like a good time. Maybe I should add an eyebrow above my eyebrow. <gasps> Ooh, really be confusing. Ooh, that's a stray hair. We'll just say that's a stray hair. Cool. Now I've got my eyebrow above my blocked out thing. There we go. I want to do some color. Just because I feel like I should be able to do some other color. Let's do some controversy. It's a really pretty purpley shade. Yep, kind of matches that. Yeah. And I'm gonna pack it right here. Why? Because, you know, I, I guess I'm doing an upside down eye. I'm gonna go in the crease, which is of course the bags under my eye. <laughs> Cause who's sleeping right now? Yep, I look gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my pieces of, this is a wig that I cut long pieces off. It was a really long wig, so it's not like this wig is unwearable. Um, and then I'm going to attempt to just kind of stick it in my hair here and then use my bangs to cover up. So again, the goal is to partially obscure this nose bridge here. Use asymmetry, so if you can use a color that's contrary to your natural hair color, that would be good. And also, contrary to your natural hair texture, so if you have curly hair, use straight hair, and if you have straight hair, use curly hair. I'm gonna pretend that works, because <laughs> we've got that, right, that wasn't the stick, that was the gloss. Ooh, I'm gonna have to clean these brushes after. Look how goopy it is. Okay, you can't see how goopy it is, it's fine. This is where if you have like gel and you want to do pieces of your hair straight, you can. It doesn't have to be different colors. And there you go. This is my facial recognition blocking makeup. Um, surprisingly, I can still see pretty well, but that might just be because my bangs aren't long enough over here. We've changed the shape of our lip. We've added some different blocks to kind of confuse things. Um, if you have like different colored contacts, you can pop those in to make it more confusing. Cosplayers out there, you can have a lot of fun with this. Uh, people who are into avant-garde fashion, you can have a lot of fun with this, like pair this with a hat, you know? I don't know. Let me know what you think. This is a little bizarre. Would you ever try doing facial recognition blocking makeup? Yeah, and what do you think of my finished look? I think it looks pretty good. Oh my gosh, yep, there we go. That's perfect. It just needs to stay right there. I still can see, oh gosh, it's in my mouth. Uh, go ahead and let me know if you've ever tried this out, if you have any tips or tricks for people, if you've ever heard of, uh, was it C-Dazzle, C-V-Dazzle before, and what your thoughts are on facial recognition technology in our lovely 21st century times. But yeah, tell me your thoughts in the comments. Like this video if you found it helpful. 
there's a couple other videos out there about this kind of thing. Um, go ahead and check them out. They're pretty interesting. And the fun thing about it is there are so many different ways to do this. Like if you go to the CV Dazzle website, you'll see like there'll be rhinestones on people's faces or spikes. Like you can really personalize it to make it your personality without like really making it your face, you know? So, and which I think is just a great opportunity for everyone because I think everyone at some point wants to look a little different than themselves. And this is the, uh, I was gonna say socially acceptable way to do so. But if I went outside right now in Ohio, I probably, people would be a little weirded out. But if I was joined by a whole bunch of other people doing this, then it would at least look like it was planned. Go ahead, subscribe to my YouTube channel, ding that notification bell to let YouTube know that you wanna see my videos when I post every Thursday. And I look forward to seeing you guys back here again. Uh, just in case you didn't know, you're my naps, you always will be. We are not a professional here. And I hope this has given you the chance to explore a new area, expand your mind, and look forward to some new learning opportunities. Anyway, bye naps. Have a nice day.